this is Alex again. Um, so you, if you've been following my continuing saga of my move, you will know that I have just recently moved from California to North Carolina. And in doing so, I had three pods, which are like these shipping containers that you can rent. They put them in your driveway, you put your stuff in there, you lock them up, they come and take them away. Um, and then whenever you get where you're going, um, they deliver them back to your driveway and you unload them and they go away again. Um, as I said, you lock them up and I'm a lock guy. So when I was going to lock them all up, um, I went through my collection of locks and tried to find the highest security, nastiest locks I could. Um, and unfortunately, the, the pods only support like about a 3 8 shackle or I think 8 millimeter is the uh, largest it will take. Um, and so as I got to the third pod, I was running out of, you know, reasonable locks. This is one of the ones that I chose and the reason for that is that despite being a Stanley and not a very expensive lock, um, it looked pretty good quality and I had not been able to pick it yet. Um, so I figured, well, it must be half decent. So, no, I don't suck that much at picking. So anyway, um, I think Bill, Bosnian Bill did a review of a similar Stanley and I have another one which I have picked. Um, but I wanted to first start with a few criticisms on this, um, and I'll, uh, I'll probably do a picking video separately, but I didn't want to mess it up any from the condition that came in. So when I put this on the pod, it was brand new, um, absolutely brand new. Let me move this here and see if I can get a little better light on it maybe. Okay, let's take a closer look at the lock itself. So. On first blush, it looks like it might be some kind of stainless or something like that, but what it appears to be is a paint or lacquer over top of um, non-stainless steel. So you can see that from having been jostled around and so forth, the paint has gotten scratched in a couple of places here. Um, I think primarily on this side, which is probably facing out, and it started to rust. And I thought that was kind of lame, um, that they could either use a better quality paint or something. You can actually see right here, if I can zoom a little well, more, you can see like a little dimple there, and I'm sure if I poked at that it would probably come off. Um, but whatever this is, is not terribly durable, and um, I think after several years of exposure, it probably wouldn't be in great shape. So there's criticism number one. If I open it up, you will also see some telltale signs of rust. Now, I haven't opened this lock up to see what's going on in there, but we'll investigate that presently. But there's some more rust there. Now, remember, this pod supposedly was kept in a um, climate-controlled area and in a covered truck coming across the country. So the only real moisture it would have had access to would be condensate um, and maybe whatever uh, rain or whatever occurred while it was in my driveway um, on one end or the other being loaded. But it's not like it was out in the rain for months. It was relatively sheltered. Pardon me. So I would not have expected, you know, any real signs of, you know, weathering on there. The rust appears to have come from something else inside. I'm going to guess it's the ball bearings, but I haven't. We'll find that out in a minute. One other thing that I noticed in horror when I got the lock back, not key retaining by the way, it's an SC4 keyway. It is a very nice key, but let's zoom in on it. Take a closer look at this key. Let me add a little additional breaking light. See those numbers? It says 388379. Now, one aspect of any high security lock is that, uh, or keying system I should say, <clears throat> is that the um, keys should not have direct bidding codes on them. And if, so it's 388379, 388379. That's a direct bidding code makes it very easy, convenient to copy if you have a code machine. Also makes it very easy to copy if you just happen to know the number. So any of you now that have an SC, can cut an SC4 key can 
cut a key for my padlock. So we won't be using that one again. So you can furious people out there. All right, now let's gut it, see what's going on inside. So I've unlocked it. You can see that there's a set screw here which retains the shackle. So I'm gonna use not quite the right bit, but something close enough to remove the set screw, hopefully. There it goes. Coming out. It's actually pretty decent. Look how long it is. It's got a little Loctite on the, or thread sealer on there. Now once I take that off, this should, perhaps with some persuasion, the key pop out. And so there you can see more rust. I have not done this yet, so, and actually some more rust just fell out off camera there. Um, now I can see inside that there is a spring which conveniently doesn't want to play nice with me. Um, it's probably binding on the ball bearing so if I unlock it again. Come on now. Should fall out. This is what happens when you do live filming. There we go. And that looks like our culprit right there. There's our spring. So they made what looks like a pretty nice lock and they put a mild or a, you know, unplated um, spring which appears to have rusted. But who knows, maybe some other part of the lock that rusted. So let's see if we can take it apart a little further. And peering inside I see, looks like another hex head screw. So hopefully my screwdriver will fit. Okay, so finally, after disassembling my hex key set and doing a lot of fiddling, I finally was able to loosen the Allen screw at the bottom of this dark, dark hole in here. And I believe it is now, no, that's clever, coming out. so slowly. I just wanted to show you that it's a good part. Here we see some more rust on the little screw or the little retaining pin, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, nut that holds the base of the lock in. It's kind of set up like an American. There's the base of the lock or the bottom of the lock, the keyway, the little keyway protector, which I guess is to prevent drilling. Maybe it's hardened steel, maybe it's not, who knows. But there we go. So we see a kind of schleg looking um, uh, lock or cylinder. We see, appears to be uh, just a little, another ball bearing detent that keeps this in place. A little more rust here. And uh, let's see what else is going on in there. Um, okay. And the other ball bearing is there. Let's see if we shine some light down in here. Maybe we can see the source of the rust. Ah. So you can see in down in the hole there. And to a lesser extent there, but it's pretty severe there all that rust in there. Now what I suspect is going on is that just as the body rusted where the enamel came off, they didn't bother to put enamel down in there, uh, down in the these holes, and as water got in there it rusted the non-stainless steel um, um, otherwise fairly nicely you know, milled and constructed lock body rusted that so probably not a high longevity item there. And that's the lock itself, which um, has a schleg back on it with this funny little actuator. And let's see if we can get a shot down inside the body. It's not too bad, I'll get a little light in there. Kind of a goofy looking mechanism, but I suspect that the um, that little plate there is to pr 
probably help prevent bypass because it is not key retaining but it looks basically similar to an American style actuator and I'm not going to try to pull that out because I don't want to try to put it back in so there we go so this is a Stanley um, shrouded shackle padlock um, that has made its way across the country um, protected my it did do its job it protected my um, personal belongings uh, my wife's personal belongings more importantly um, but um, and I can tell you from picking these the keyways are key, the locks are pretty decent good tolerances at least um, but if you're going to use this outdoors I would go with something made out of stainless steel or a little better because I have a feeling that um, various components are going to either rust out or rust in place. You can even see rust on this screw that was holding that in. Plus you need a really long hex, a really long very thin hex uh, Allen key to get that out. It's kind of a pain. So anyway, maybe I'll pick the cylinder for you and uh, on the next video. So anyhow, this is Alex. Um, thanks for watching. Um, Stanley, if you by some miracle are, are watching, uh, uh, maybe you have some comments for us. Um, or maybe not. Anyhow, um, and uh, as always, have fun and absolutely keep it legal. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.